This is this is how we scale highly intelligent networks so that we can solve these these extremely difficult problems humanity has. So welcome to Crypto Insights, where we teach you about crypto. Today, we have an interview with Mac that's going to tell us everything about BitTensor. I'm pronouncing it correctly, right? Yes, BitTensor. So yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself. So my name is Mac. I am a writer with BitTensor. I currently am in charge of the documentation and the explanations of how the BitTensor code works. Occasionally, I'll work on a blog post, and currently I'm working on videos that demonstrate how to use BitTensor. So then let's go straight into the questions. So can you explain, and I know this is going to be very hard, but could you explain in everyday words what BitTensor is trying to solve? BitTensor is trying to scale machine intelligence bigger than would otherwise be possible if it was done solely by three central, three or four central authorities. So how is it, how does it currently work then? Like what is the problem and how is BitTensor gonna solve it? So AI is currently siloed behind these major corporations. Um, AI has become so big that if you want to create a competing model um, with the current infrastructure out there, you'll need a lot of money to train for compute, a lot of uh, money for compute to train the model, and you'll have to start from scratch. The economy is currently not incentivized to share weights with one another. Um, every time you want to create a new model, you are not learning from the previous model. So could I say the way we are using now Google Drive to share files with each other, is that the way BitTensor is going to solving the problem of sharing the, the AI? So BitTensor, what BitTensor allows people to do is connect with each other on a protocol across the network. Any, anybody can connect their AI model and run a server um, and contribute to the greater hive mind of intelligence. Okay, and they, you also have your own native token, which is called Bittensort Tau. Could you tell us a little bit like how that name is coming together and what is the purpose of Bittensort Tau? So Tau, I am not entirely sure where the name came from. Um, I think it might have some Buddhist origins, um, but Tau is the gateway into the network. You can think of Tau, the Tau token somewhat like bandwidth, the more of the token you hold, the more you can utilize the network for your own applications. Okay. And if we, so this concept is really new for me, as I told you in the beginning of the video, is there any competitor that comes anytime, any close to you? Like what is, what is the competitor that you keep an eye on? I, I can't think of any competitors that are currently in the space. Um, if anyone did anything like BitTensor, um, we're designed so that we are collaborative with all production of machine intelligence. The closest thing that I can think of to BitTensor would be Jensen. Um, they're doing some cool stuff with its decentralized distributed machine learning. Okay. And is there any use cases already? Is there already, I don't know, maybe even Google or Facebook showing interest in, in, in your network or is it something completely new? Is it more outsourced? So BitTensor is pretty early. Um, we are developing and getting stronger as a network collectively. Um, I wouldn't say that we're quite on the level of, per se, chat GPT um, or GPT-3, um, but the use case comes from the knowledge that we serve on the networks. Similar companies like Cohere and OpenAI sell API access to their high quality models. Um, we build the same gateway to Tau holders, but onto our incentivized computer layer, which scales like Bitcoin. Okay, so are you saying that you're mostly um, mostly setting everything up, but there is no not yet a, a, a protocol or a person using the network besides just validating all the transactions? No, BitSensor is fully functional. It's it's been online since November of last year. 
You can currently access BitTensor as a client. Okay. But the question is, are there already clients? Yes, there's about 4,096 uh, nodes currently on the network. Okay. Um, and is there any big investors that showed interest or that are invested in this project? Is it backed up by anyone? As far as, as, far as I'm aware, um, DCG, Polychain, and Firstmark all bought Tau from the foundation mined in the early days of the network. Um, but all of that Tau was mined um, fairly. It was not created out of thin air. They had to buy just like everybody else. Okay. And what is next on the roadmap? Sorry, just forget to ask. When uh, when was the company actually founded? Because you say it's early, it's early. And since I heard about it already a couple of times, I don't know how early it is. Uh, when was the company really founded? So the main, the main network first launched in November of last year. Okay. And then everything was immediately live, as you said. Yes. Okay, and what is next on the roadmap? So what what are you expecting in the upcoming months? So on January 10th, we have our Finney network launch onto the Polkadot parachain network. Um, this will connect us to all the networks on Polkadot. We also have a wallet coming out and sub networks such as audio, video, um, and image on the horizon. And the wallet, could you tell us a little bit more about that? Like what type of wallet is that going to be? So the wallet is just going to be a simple uh, wallet used for holding Tau developed by the Open Tensor Foundation. Okay. Um, so you say Polkadot. I know that the, the um, Tau is also not tradable on any of the known exchanges that we know. Um, is there going to be any change in that? Uh, what exchanges are, will be the first one where Tau will be listed? So the... Our role as a foundation, we will not uh, try to develop any exchanges, but plugging into Polkadot will give the community the opportunity to develop their own uh, exchanges on the Polkadot network. Ah, okay. So it's not going to be part of your roadmap. Um, so yeah, I think we discussed everything. Is there anything you would like us to know? Like what is important to share from, from your point of view? How did you become interested also personally in this project? So I... I personally became interested in BitTensor. Um, I was looking for a way to scale um, neuroscience. I was um, a freshman in college and I was very discouraged by the pace of research. It was very slow and I was discouraged that, uh, you know, we, we can't scale this as fast as we need it to be scaled. And so I ran, and then I met BitTensor and I was like, this is the solution. This is this is how we scale highly intelligent networks so that we can solve these these extremely difficult problems humanity has. Man, so yeah, that's uh, that's a great motivator to uh, to join it. So where can people uh, find more about you? Do you have like Twitter? Are you more active on Twitter or on Discord? Or I, I do have a Twitter. Um, I'm not very active. Uh, I'm pretty active in our Discord community. Um, BitTensor has a pretty active BitTensor community. My name is Quack on Discord. Okay, perfect. So yeah, thanks for the interview. And uh, I hope when there's any updates, especially about the new wallet, I personally find wallets very interesting, the way they work, because some of them have great interfaces, some have bad interfaces, then staking is, is managed in, in different ways. So maybe you're interested in, uh, in talking about it in the future. What do you think? Yeah, sounds good, Thomas.